Freakwide Vancouver. Pre-game, post-game, every game presented by Bodog from Sports Odds to free casino games make a play. Bodog.net. Watton and J-Pat here with you once again with another edition of the pre-game show as home sweet home wraps up for the Canucks. Six games homestand finishing here against the Dallas Stars, a team that hasn't been through Vancouver yet this year. And this is a good hockey club. I know the Canucks beat them in overtime in their first meeting of the year, and the Canucks will be back in the Lone Star State here in about 10 days' time. But yeah, this is one and only for the Dallas Stars this late in the season. But they are second in the West. They're sixth in the overall standings. Uh, Goal differential, they are third in the National Hockey League. So they know how to get it done. But the Canucks have shown their ability to get it done here in recent weeks as well. Uh, Six-game homestand that you referenced. It started with a 2-1 loss to the Minnesota Wild. But since then, they have rattled off four straight victories. So we'll see if they can end with a high five with a victory over the Dallas Stars tonight. Let's get to the lineup change. It's presented by Delaney's OK Tire out there on Fraser Highway in Langley. Not expecting any changes from the Canucks, and uh, looks like Demko's going to get the start and goal. Yeah, the lineup change is that there, I don't think, is a lineup change. Uh, White Tamper yeah, White with a, a winning record and a winning lineup. I think that's the strategy that Rick Tockett's employing here. It does look like it's going to be Thatcher Demko, who has won three in a row. He's 4-1 and one in his return to the lineup. In fact, a back into action in Dallas against the Stars uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so Thatcher Demko looking like mid-season Thatcher Demko, and it appears that the Canucks will go with the same 18 skaters that they have used during this four-game win streak. So they really are just kind of riding uh, a winning lineup right now, and it looks like they'll ride it into this game against the Stars. The top-end guys for the Canucks have been performing all year long, but against Ottawa, we saw some of the bottom six guys starting to chip in. Yeah, Kuzmenko with a couple of goals, JT Miller another shorthanded goal, and you like that top-end production, but you're also seeing some guys stepping up a little lower in the lineup. Nils Amon all of a sudden coming on has four points in his last four games. Sheldon Drives got to double digits with his 10th goal of the season. Dakota Joshua had a couple of assists, and that's how good teams go about their business. And I'm not here to suggest that the Vancouver Canucks all of a sudden are a good hockey club, but as they try to put the building blocks in place, you want your top-end guys to come through, and you want them to be supported uh, with a little bit of production lower in the lineup, and they certainly got that in the victory over the Senators. We're into the final quarter of the season for the Canucks. However, this next stretch of games is a compressed schedule for Vancouver. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a test physically for this hockey club. We mentioned the six-game homestand, so a lot of home cooking, days off between games, but that's about to change. They play tonight, and then they'll fly south. They play three and four on the weekend, and in fact, they're in a stretch starting with this game tonight, eight games in the next 13 nights. So it's going to be interesting to see how Rick Tockett handles his goaltending, Uh, They don't have a lot of healthy bodies, although Ethan Bear looks like he's getting closer, isn't expected to return to the lineup tonight. Aiden McDonough, the new signee, is supposed to join this club out of the road. We'll see if they plug him in or if he needs a few practice days and some skates with his team as he turns pro here. Uh, Whatever the case, eight games in 13 nights with a fair bit of travel. Uh, That's asking an awful lot of any hockey club at any point in the season. So that's what the Canucks are up against, starting a little bit of a schedule gauntlet here tonight. This is funny to say, but the Canucks PK as of recent has been a wagon. The power play, however, though, sputtering a little bit, and they made a little changes at practice yesterday. Yeah, just one power play goal in the last three games, and that was the empty netter the other night against the Ottawa Senators to seal that one. So you'll take them all, and they all go into the Canucks account, but in terms of actually setting up with the man advantage, going to work and and finding a way to produce, uh, power play has gone cold, and it's not just the last three games. In fact, the last eight hockey games. And remember, the Canucks are in a stretch here where they've won seven of ten, but in their last eight games, the power play at 12%. Ooh. So that leaves plenty of room for improvement. And to your point, yeah, at practice yesterday, uh, we saw Anthony Bovillier, who has been part of the first unit since the trade. He was dropped down to the second power play unit, and it looks like Andre Kuzmenko and Brock Besser are going to join Elias Pettersson, JT Miller, and Quinn Hughes to form PP1. So uh, we'll see what that looks like against the Stars team that uh, is very good defensively. So even if they get power play opportunities, uh, no guarantee that you're going to cash in. Let's take a look at those Stars now who are coming off back-to-back games against the Seattle Kraken. Oh, yeah, and back-to-back wins over Seattle as well. Yeah, they went rolled into climate fledge over the weekend, a little bit of a scheduling court, stayed in Seattle, played uh, Saturday, went to overtime and won that one. And then last night, three power play goals in a 5-2 victory over the Kraken. So Seattle's been a good team, but uh, this Dallas team, as we said, 
uh, upper echelon in the National Hockey League. And I think they proved that probably to themselves and also uh, to the Seattle Kraken, picking up four points in the Emerald City over the weekend. So this is back-to-back for Dallas. They played last night, and Jake Ottinger was in goal as he was on the weekend. Uh, and that makes you wonder, who will the Canucks face in goal tonight? Uh, Scott Wedgwood's their backup, but he's been out with an injury of late. Matt Murray. No, not that Matt Murray. The other Matt Murray. This is a 25-year-old from St. Albert, Alberta. He has one NHL game under his belt. It was a win, uh, but it looks like Matt Murray may be the guy. So the Canucks may end up facing Matt Murray twice here on the homestand. They saw him when Toronto came through and they beat him. <laughs> and now it looks like they may see the Dallas Stars version of Matt Murray, an inexperienced netminder behind a very good hockey club. And we'll see if he can hold up his end of the bargain if, in fact, he gets the call. Stars have been playing very well as of recent. However, the Canucks got them the last time the two faced. Yeah, and remember, it went to overtime, early in overtime, and then there was the lengthy delay, but uh, Anthony Bovillier was onside as he pulled the puck across the blue line, set up Andre Kuzmenko for the game winner. The Stars are 7-1-1 in one of their last nine hockey games, so uh, the one at the far right in that column, that was the overtime loss to the Canucks. They lost in the dying seconds to the Calgary Flames on home ice, but otherwise, they have been on a roll, mowing down just about everybody in their wake. So 7-1-1 one one in their last nine hockey games. And again, this is a team that's got top-end talent, but uh, very good defensively as well. Uh, this will be a test for the Canucks. There's no doubt about it. Stars were buyers at the trade deadline, picked up Max Domi, and they need him right now. Yeah, and he's been a nice addition, and he's had a really good season, or he had a really good season in Chicago. I think that made him attractive to a number of teams. Dallas went and got him some help down the middle. He has a goal and two assists in the five games uh, since relocating uh, to the Lone Star State. And you're right, they need him because uh, Tyler Sagan is out right now. Scary incident, another one of these cuts uh, that we've seen too often around the National Hockey League. In fact, general managers were discussing protective measures at the GM's meetings down in Florida this week. Tyler Sagan suffered uh, a deep laceration, but apparently no tendons, no muscle damage. So uh, he's going to have to recover here, but he's out of their lineup right now. And he's a depth player on this team, but uh, he's still a guy that they want in their lineup. And when they're up and running by the time the playoffs roll around, uh, he should be back in the lineup. And uh, that'll just add to uh, what is already a, a really solid lineup. But so does Max Domi. Depth, scoring, and a guy that's just been around, just seen a lot in the National Hockey League. So I like the pickup of Max Domi, and I, I think the Stars do too. Tyler Sagan, as mentioned there, and Jamie Benn have been the stars for the stars over the last few years. However, they got a couple of young guns that have now taken the reins. Yeah, there's a new dynamic duo down in Big D. There's no question about it. Jason Robertson, like we all know what Elias Pettersson is doing this season. Robertson has more goals, more points than Elias Pettersson. So we're talking about two guys that are in the top 10 in National Hockey League scoring. Jason Robertson's next goal will be his 40th of the season. He's sitting on 39 goals, 46 assists, 85 points. I, by my math, I think he's seventh in the NHL in goals and points. So, uh, yeah, this guy really has uh, broken out in a big way. He was a 40-goal scorer last year, and he's going to back that up. Pretty good chance he'll establish a new career high. And nobody around the league really talks about Rope Hands, but, uh, boy, he has settled in as the number one center down in Dallas. He's got 62 points on the season, a 30-goal scorer already. So, uh, you know, you take those guys. Joe Pavelski's the winger on that top line. Their captain, Jamie Benn, has had a huge bounce-back season. Uh, he was uh, active. He scored against the Canucks the last time they faced them. A Victoria guy coming back to Vancouver. Who knows how many more trips he'll have through British Columbia. I'm not running him out of the league, but uh, he is working his way into the twilight of his career. So I think, uh, you know, when the schedule only presents one trip back home to his home province, uh, you know that Jamie Benn will be up for it. He's up for just about every game and every challenge. And again, uh, you just list off those players. Uh, it all adds up to a formidable group that uh, the Dallas Stars have put together. You tossed out a bunch of stats there, but what's the stat that stands out tonight presented by Jason Hominick at Jason.Mortgage? Well, I go back to Jamie Benn, who scored shorthanded against the Canucks. Remember last time, a breakaway, uh, sort of welcomed Thatcher Demko back to the National Hockey League after the injury, turned around, tucked the puck five hole, tied the game at one, but the Canucks were able to uh, continue to chip away and ultimately got the win there. But the stat that stands out is all these shorthanded goals that the Canucks are scoring four in their last four games, seven in the last 10. It's been an incredible run. We'll see if it can continue. It feels like something that isn't sustainable, and yet we say that, and all they do is go out and score more shorthanded goals. So, really, that's been a, a story of this homestand for the Vancouver Canucks. Seven shorthanded goals in their last 10, and we'll see if they can somehow squeeze another one out 
against the stars here this evening. The stat that stands out is a presentation of Jason Hominick at Jason.Mortgage. Let's get to my Bodog best bet. And I got to pick up the pace a little bit here because the Canucks are starting to get away from me. I've got Anthony Beauvillier anytime goal scorer tonight at plus 230, getting over two to one on your money. Hear me out on Beauvillier right now. I know he was taken off a of PP1 yesterday at practice, but it's five on five where I've really been impressed by Beauvillier as of recent. He had five shots on goal against Ottawa. He was all over the place in terms of chances. His last two goals came against the Stars. He's gone. On five without Beauvillier scratching the score sheet tonight with a goal. Take it to the bank at plus 230. Eh, an interesting call. Like sometimes I would accuse you of going for the low hanging fruit. Not this one. Again, on that line with Elias Pedersen and Kuzmenko, and you're right. He was dynamic the other night, had some really good looks, wasn't able to pull the trigger, and maybe seeing that Dallas uniform will bring back some good memories on the last time uh, the Canucks faced the Stars. But yeah, I mean, if you're playing with Elias Pedersen, you are expected to produce. So enough about the chances. Let's see if Anthony Beauvillier can pull the trigger for the Canucks tonight. All right, I got Anthony Beauvillier to do something tonight. Who do you got to do something for the Canucks? I got the birthday boy, JT Miller, turning the big 3-0. And of course, uh, the new contract extension hasn't even kicked in yet. And this was part of the concern on uh, the part of many in the Canucks fan base when they, in fact, uh, committed to JT Miller that, yes, he would be 30 before the contract kicked in. He's actually got a nice little run here. He's got four goals in his last four games. He's got 12 points in his last 10. So he's been doing something for the Vancouver Canucks. And He's been front and center with all those shorthanded goals that they have scored. So let's see. Beyond blowing out some candles, uh, I'm looking for him to do something else tonight. And that is continue to produce for the Vancouver Canucks. But yeah, we'll go with 30-year-old JT Miller is the do-something guy tonight. All right, Canucks did something they haven't done all year, and that was win a fourth in a row. Can they make it five tonight? We'll find out. This has been another edition of the Rinkwide Vancouver podcast presented by Bodog. For Jeff Patterson, I'm Andrew Wadden. Remember, Rinkwide is the show that always scores.